You know, every once in a while, you might have a project on a wine glass that just doesn't work out. It just is, is either the wrong color or it's broken and you toss it in the trash. Well, don't do that. Don't toss it in the trash. Give it new life. Watch the video and find out how I took these broken wine glasses and turned them into something brand new and magnificent. I made these wine glasses a while back and I'll link to the video below if you're interested in seeing how I made them. But they didn't turn out how I wanted so I decided not to sell them at an upcoming art show and I just set them aside until I could think of a way to use them because I really like the colors in them. And so I got this idea of breaking the glass up with um, using my nippers as kind of a hammer because the nippers would not fit on the glass except for on the really thick base. But I had an idea to use these as like um, like fish scales, bright colorful fish scales. And so I'm just breaking the glass up until I get it into big pieces and little pieces. The glass is not really sharp, but you do want to be careful when you're handling any glass like this. I even used a piece of cutaway scrap wood for the base of this. I gave it a really, really good sanding because it was just rough cut plywood. And you can see the natural shape of a of an angelfish right here. So there's the you know the top fin and then the bottom fin, but it needed a tail. And I was just trying to get I was on my phone just trying to get the perfect shape of a nice angelfish tail. And then I smooth out the rough edges, get another piece of scrap wood and some wood glue to attach the tail onto the fish with my brad nailer, and boom, it's done and it's ready for paint. And then I'm just giving it a good coat of white paint front and back with, honestly, the first can of paint that I could grab in my work shed. <whistles> now I'm going to do something I haven't done in a very long time, and that is an acrylic pour swipe. I'm using the rest of my white house paint to mix my base that I'm going to swipe onto, and it's just house paint, a little bit of Floetrol, and water until I get in an even consistency. My other paints were already pre-mixed in about the same ratio. The only one that's different is the swipe color right here, which is one part titanium white Amsterdam and four parts Floetrol and four drops of silicone. I do not stir my silicone into my swipe color. I haven't done an acrylic swipe in a really long time, so I'm a little bit nervous about how I'm gonna do it. So I just decided to do the middle first and I'm just drizzling on my different colors, making sure I have enough. And then I'm putting my, kind of my, I guess it's my pillow paint on the the rest of the fish where I'm gonna swipe onto. And I just wanna make sure I have enough paint on there for the color to glide. And I almost forgot to put my swipe, my swipe uh, color right there. And I'm just taking my paper towel and just, I mean, swiping. There's really no other way to describe it. It's a swipe. And I'm maybe not explaining this, you know, very well or very clearly because I really don't do this often. I don't, well, I don't do this at all really, but I wanted to do something different on the base of this fish before I put my glass on top of it. I just wanted something really oceany and beachy and, you know, and fun. And look at those cells popping out. I am just really, I don't know why I don't do this more often, but I guess it's because a lot of people do acrylic pouring and a lot of people do acrylic swipes just as, you know, as a pure art form. And I think there are some really, really good acrylic pour artists out there on YouTube. So I don't want this to be a, a tutorial on acrylic pouring or acrylic swipe or acrylic anything. I'm just kind of doing my own thing and making this work for me as the base for my fish. So if you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do an acrylic pour or an ac acrylic swipe, or dirty pour or whatever you want to call it. There are a lot better artists out there than I am. This is just my thing and take it or leave it. Okay. So I'm happy with this. This is a good base. I'm going to just leave this alone and let it dry and then take it on to the next step. But y'all look at these beautiful cells. Look at that. Just look at that. Will you just look at that? I let the paint dry for a full day and I did not even poke at it a single time to see if it was dry in all that time. 
It is so tempting to poke your finger in it to see if it's dry, but do not do that. Now, you may think it was really, really easy to lay these glass pieces out like fish scales, but let me tell you, it is not easy. I could not figure out a good way to get these pieces to nest into each other like fish scales do. Look at a fish scales or look at mermaid scales, how they just kind of nest, you know, nest on each other one on top of the other, like layers. It is very, this was very difficult. I, this was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Well, and plus the, some of the glass pieces were bigger. Some of them were smaller. They didn't break evenly like I thought they would. Um, I do follow the crazy glass lady, Linda Berman on YouTube. She is awesome. She makes it look so easy and y'all, it was not easy. So I'm going to have to practice on this a little bit more if I want to get really, really good at it. Now you see this hole right here. Doesn't that look like an eyeball? Well, that's going to be his eyeball. That's, that's just going to be an eyeball. It's just a natural looking eyeball and it was a hole in the scrap piece of wood already. I didn't drill that, but that's going to be his eyeball. And I probably could have used one of the, the end pieces of glass that had like a little, you know, it's part of the stem still attached to it. I probably could have used that as like where the eyeball is or maybe the mouth, but maybe next time. But whew, y'all, I feel like that just took forever to get those pieces laid out like I wanted to. But some of the edges did need a little bit of sanding. I used a um, waterproof sandpaper and some water just to cut down on the dust and the friction and just smooth down some of those edges. Believe it or not, this glass really was not very sharp. I don't have that many rough edges, but I do want to smooth some of those edges down just to prevent um, you know, any, any potential accidents. Cause I do plan on putting this in my art show booth at my upcoming show in a couple of weeks. So I, I don't want anybody to accidentally hit their hand or their arm against it and, and cut themselves, but I, it is not very sharp at all. And I don't tumble my glass in a tumbler, rock tumbler, like a lot of people do, but, um, you know, you just, you just have to be careful. And I did wear gloves, towards the end just so that I can practice good safety and be a good role model to everybody on YouTube that's watching my video. So wear gloves and be safety conscious, okay? Once I finally got all the pieces where I wanted it, I'm using UV resin and this particular brand of resin is Light Wish. And then I just have a, um, you know, just a cheap, simple little UV resin lamp that I think came um, with my Let's Resin resin kit or Let's Resin UV resin kit that I got a while back. And I do have a link to both the Let's Resin UV resin kit and also the Light Wish UV resin in the description below the video. The, the UV resin kit from Let's Resin is, is uh, well, both on Amazon, but the Let's Resin UV resin kit is a really great beginner kit. Like it's uh, two, two little bottles of resin, UV resin. I don't remember how many milliliters they were, but it came with a silicone mat, silicone sticks, um, the light, and I think it was around 12 or $14. A great little kit if you're just getting started with UV resin and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. This is the kit to buy. And I've got, I do have a link to, um, to the Amazon I have an Amazon link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you do use my link to buy any of these products that I recommend, uh, I do get a, a small commission, and every little bit helps me to grow my business, so um, I'd appreciate the support. Now, I'm using the UV resin like a glue. I'm using just enough of the UV resin to hold the glass down and hold it in place. Now I'm having to use a little bit more in some spots than others because some of the glass pieces are not completely level. So I'm kind of having to build, you know, build a base a little bit with the UV resin. And then once I have the bigger pieces down in, in place, I'm taking some of the smaller pieces that are still, you know, good enough a good enough size to to look like a scale and I'm just using those to kind of fill in some of the gaps there weren't that many gaps honestly but I have enough glass that I could just kind of fill in and and 
um, you know, fill out the fish a little bit more so that it looks more, more natural. And I really am loving how this is turning out. It's, you know, it's a little bit abstract. It look, it's a little bit funky. It doesn't exactly look very much like an angel fish, but I mean, just use your imagination. You know what it is. It looks like a fish. I, I think it's very cute. And I really do hope that someone likes it enough that they just have to buy it and have to take it home. I don't have enough of the glass pieces to use on the tail, but fish don't have scales on their tails. Anyway, I just made a rhyme. So I have some crushed glass, and this is um, this is windshield glass. So it's safety glass from a motorcycle windshield that I happened to find curbside that somebody had thrown out. So one man's trash is my treasure. It didn't take very much effort to break it up into little pieces at all. And it's not sharp. It's That's why it's safety glass. It's not sharp at all. Now I'm going to add a little bit of bling and really secure the glass down to that board and make it permanent. I'm using a Let's Resin Thin Set Resin for this application because I did, I wanted a resin that was a little bit thinner than the KS Resin Liquidy Slit, which is a facet. I wanted a thinner resin that would really have a lot of flow and get into all the, the cracks in between the glass pieces so that they would really stay secure. And I was able to take my stick in between the glass pieces to make sure I got all the resin out of the cup, number one, but then I made sure that I got the resin in between all, the, all of the glass pieces and then enough on the tail too to make sure that those pieces were secure. And then just taking my finger and sort of smooshing it around, making sure all the wood is covered. And, um, oh, and then the eyeball. You see how perfect that spot is for an eyeball? I just took one of those gl glass, um, I guess it's like an aquarium. No, it's a vase filler that you get, get at the dollar store. It's just such a pretty color green. And that's just I told you that's a perfect eyeball. I did sprinkle a little bit of blue and aqua tube confetti that I got at the dollar store. And then some of this opal chunky glitter that I honestly do not remember where I got. I've had it in this Tupperware forever, but it just adds a little bit of shine. Well, thank you for staying to the end of this video. I hope that I've inspired you to maybe try your own trash to treasure upcycle. Have a good day, friends. Bye.